Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend. A lot of you should be having a four day weekend today. Well, three day weekend, because um, you're gonna have Labor Day off on Monday. So I hope you enjoy yourself, enjoy your families. And those of you that have to work, well, hopefully you could just enjoy your weekend and you know, hey, some people don't have jobs. That's just an, another way to look at that. So anyway, guys, appreciate my subscribers, new, sub new subscribers, everything like that. And so guys, I just want to talk to y'all really quickly because you know, I did a part one and part two of a video that says you do not have to join a church to fellowship. You do not have to join a church to fellowship, right? And I did a part one and part two. So I've had like questions as far as what to look for if because there are some people that actually there are some people that go to church you know there are churches that are open and if it wasn't for coronavirus COVID-19 they would be in the body of Christ right so guys what I would tell you is this I am not against church per se but I think people need to understand that the church is us. We are the body of Christ. The church is us and then that building is a building. When we're gathered together, we are the church. That's why when God is coming back for his bride, he's coming back for his church. He's not coming back for all these millions and, and millions and millions of buildings all over the place. He's coming back for his people. Now, as far as some of you, you may prefer to be in a church building gathered. There's nothing wrong with that. But the thing that you always have to think about and what I would suggest is you must ensure that you have a good relationship with the Lord. You need to separate the two. You going to church does not mean it's, it does not mean you have a good relationship with God. OK, and you not going into that building does not mean that you do not have a good relationship with God. Because there's a lot of people that go to church and they are hell through the week and then they go to church and then the minute they step back out, they're hell again. So guys, I'm here to tell you that what is first and foremost in when you are going to church is to realize this going into a church building or not does not bear any weight on if you are a true Christian or if you or your relationship, your closeness to God. Because if you go to church out of fear of, oh, I might be doing the wrong thing, then your approach is gonna be different and you are going to be very much vulnerable to manipulation and then end up being in idolatry. Idolatry is when you are more concerned about entering into this building, but when you leave the building, you don't care about anything about God. It's just about entering this place. And it truly is idolatry because people, they will be drawn to church, drawn to going in there, drawn to the pastors and the people, seeing them drawn to the auxiliaries. But that's all they care about because when they leave, they don't care about God that's seeing them 24 seven. So your approach has to be different. As far as choosing a church guys, lessons that I have learned and what I would suggest and what I myself would do if I was uh, going this route would be when you be led by God, first of all, you need to pray. A lot of times what happens is you hear someone tells you about a church and go, okay, or you see them on TV or you hear something about them and you just go. Very rarely are people praying and seeking God as far as where they should go. Second, when you enter in a church, do not be so quick to just join. Take your time. Take your time. I would say six months to a year guys just attend if this is a place you want to go then you check it out and you give yourself time don't start tithing i you know those of you that just insist that you have to tithe i have a video that talks about the truth about the tithes i think it's very important that you are looking at that video because if you still want to walk in the mosaic laws of tithing then you should follow it exactly the way it should be However, the Lord is very clear that tithing, the, the word of God shows us that tithing is a thing of the past. It falls under the Mosaic laws, okay? Because you can't just take one thing from the Mosaic laws and then you're not following the other stuff. However, this video is not about tithing. You can check out my video called The Truth About Tithing and I'll show you scripture and then you find there's a few other people that teaches about this, all right? 
So, but for those of you that you're going to church and you're still going to insist on tithing, I would say, guys, do not enter into that church already trying to obligate yourself in these areas. You're there to worship, but observe. Observe your surrounding, right? Um, you can still give offering if you choose to do that, right? But guys, you want to pay attention to what's on the altar. What's allowed on the altar of a church lets you know the the climate of that church the spirit of that church okay so what's up there all right listen to the teaching listen to the teaching okay what is being taught ask the lord to give you discernment pay attention guys when you go to a church do not get caught up in how great the sermon was how it it moved on your emotions how great the choir sound how awesome the praise team is because that is just that's just tickling the flesh but guys allow yourself time to sit there and see what is there now guys sometimes the lord may show you something and you hear something in the teaching that's totally against god it's totally um it is heresy you don't want to say well let's just see let's just sit out here for six months you don't need to go any further because you see what's there okay um but be aware you're surrounding look and see how much is a pastor approachable, all right? Listen how they talk. I once visited a church where I heard them say, you know, there's benefits that comes with membership. You know, when there's benefits to membership at this church. So I'm like, mm, okay. And there's a lot of churches that throw that out there, that there are benefits to membership. But guys, that's not how the Lord rolls. There's benefits to being a child of God. That's what it should be. There are benefits to being a child of God, which comes from Christ, right? But we are also supposed to reach out and save the lost. We should not be given this thing about of um, exclusivity and things of that nature, right? Just like they will, depending on if you are a tither or not in the church, depends on how much time you will get, how much, if you could get counseling, if you could get assistance, or oh, if you don't tithe, they're going to check your records. Oh, we can't help you. Where's that in the scripture? Okay. So look to see if there, there's signs and symptoms of exclusivity where certain people are shut out. Look at how they treat one another. Look at how people are with one another, right? That's something that will help you, that will show you. What else can I really tell you? When you are in any ministry, guys, the key is you're there to be filled with the word of God so you can go out into the world. You are also there because you, God has given you a purpose. God has given you stuff to do. You must always know and realize that you are not created to serve a pastor just to serve a specific person, a specific ministry, okay? What we do in church, okay, that's just us being in church, right? Um, but the idea is we encourage one another, but a lot of times you find that it's just limited to those four walls, to those people. And then when you go out, you walk right by a homeless person, but you take all your money into the church. When you enter into a church, you should be looking at it more of like a fueling station, if you want to say for your spirit man, so you can have more to give out into the world. And that's what you do. And you must not neglect the vision and the thing God has placed in you. There is no way that everybody's vision should be just the pastor's vision. That's not right. God made us all individuals. He made us all different. So you need to know, God, what is my purpose? And then you don't put your purpose and your vision in the hands of your pastor. There are things that is for you and God alone. And so maybe your pastor may speak to you or, you, or whatever, but you never want to go where you're put, going to ask your leaders and your pastor's permission to do the things of God. Okay, if you want to notify them of certain things, you seek God and find out what God wants you to do. In all things, in all interactions with churches and fellowship, God is first. He's the head. He's at headquarters in your life. He's the one that leads you. He's the final say. His blueprint is what you're going to follow. If you have that mindset when you're in a church, then you will not be led astray. When you see sin, when you see things going on, guys, there's no one perfect. But when you just see habitual sin going on, when it's just drama going on, 
When you have a nasty pastor, nasty pastor's wives, they're being nasty, they're pitting people against each other. You don't want to sit there and just sit under that. That is not of God. And if they're not trying to change, you are not about to be the wider to change it. Okay, unless God tells you that and be sure that it's God and not you just being fearful to to, you know, be elsewhere or no or being nowhere specifically. Um, other thing, how when you go when you do daycare centers and things like that, me personally, I'm not about the children's church thing no more. OK, because what you want to let's just put it like this. Use discretion. Find out what your kids are learning. What are they being taught? What are they being taught? And what's funny is how quickly we will drop our kids off with someone in children's church without ever inquiring about background check. When you take your child to a daycare center, you wanna know, you, you're gonna check out the history of the daycare, you wanna know if they're four star, three stars, all the stuff, but you'll quickly drop your kid off with a stranger for however long because you just wanna sit peaceably in church. I feel that you should be able to sit as a family in church, but at the same time, if they're te teaching your children and you put them in children's church, then you want it to be something where they're really learning something, guys. Whether you just take a service to sit in there, but then I don't know if they'll let you do that, okay? But you want to listen to your children after children's church, because I don't think they let you sit in there, because that would be a hazard, because you haven't, you know, just like with any daycare, you just can't go up in there like that. But guys... Listen to what your children are learning. If you have teenagers, what what are they teaching your kids in teen church? In that six month to one year or one year window, guys, you will see everything you need to see. Sometimes you'll see it sooner than later because I'm telling you, if you're in a den of thieves, God is gonna let you know, he's gonna raise that red flag. Just don't let a church be your end all be all. Because people worship church, people worship church leaders, but they don't care about what God sees them do outside of that. They hide everything, they want to look a certain way, and then they want to act different, you know. But and they act different before man, but before God, it's whatever. So that lets you know what's going on in your heart. Search, search and seek out with the Lord what it is that He desires for you, where He desires your family to be planted, if that's where He wants you to be. I will let you know. Finding a church that is not that does not have their own agenda, that's not about trying to control you, that's not all about trying to be like the world is very rare. However, there are ministries like that. There are ministries like that and they do exist. And so some people, it, it's good that you're in the church if that's what God is leading you to do. Um, but you must just be very... Be very mindful of where you are and where you're taking your children and where you're taking your family. Do not quickly join a church because you're being pressured to do it. They keep asking you or because your friend is there because of word of mouth or because it's, it's a popular church. I don't care who it is. You sit there and you be led by God and you ask the Lord to give you discernment and wisdom and you check all parties. What are your teens listening to? You find out what they're teaching them. You find out what your little ones are teaching if you have them in there with you and you listen to what's being taught in the ministry and how everyone interacts. Who's the focus after church? What are they like with you after church? Okay, so if you do these things, I believe that God will lead you in the right direction. If you are going to be inside the organized church at the same time if God has called you out of it don't fight him don't fight him because what you find that you're struggling against is what people have always told you oh I can't be right if I'm not in a church oh this that, and the other believe you believe you me guys God the sometime <laughs> my best experience and my my deepest revelation with God has been outside of the church because when you're studying the word of God and you're in the presence of God, he shows you, he shows you things that you never thought was there before. And you find yourself repenting because you realize you were just walking in self, your focus was wrong and God is about people. God is about people guys. So he'll teach you so many things. You just pour out and he'll pour into you. And that's, what's awesome. 
I at the, the the instructions of the Lord I will still go and I will fellowship um, you know visit a church where God leads me where people are worshiping the Lord but I was not a member of their church per se I was a member of a church before that okay before God brought me out and throughout my life throughout my years I wasn't necessarily I was not a Christian okay not truly so being in the military and going from duty station to duty station when I was seeking God I would visit churches and things of that nature and I try to do membership at different times of my life and I can tell you it was there were some good things but there were definitely some bad things that outweigh the good and so I didn't understand that you know and even when I totally just went into the world it was because I felt like uh you know what maybe God is not as legit because look at this you know I could still be me just do me right and so, guys, over the years, I've just learned that God is not housed in a building. He's in us. And there's nothing wrong with fellowshipping. There's nothing wrong with meeting in small groups. There's nothing wrong with meeting online. There's nothing wrong with being in the right church. But I'm here to tell you, more often than not, you're going to see absolute idolatry. And if you're not careful, you feel like, well, if you can't beat them, join them. Or this is this must be how things are these days. No, that's not how things are these days. The Spirit of God ain't moving like that. It's people are buying into things that's, that they feel like would draw more people, that would make church more tolerable, okay? And that's not the way. So, guys, I hope this helped you. Pray about it. Um... As I said, some people, they are entering into church buildings. And guys, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. But you must be very, very careful. At the same time, I gave you some guidelines for what to what to do. And allow God to give you my guidelines are not the end all be all. Maybe God will instruct you differently. And when God calls you out, he calls you out. You go to him. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid and believe that, oh, this is the only way God can reach me. This is the only way I can be saved because you're going to have, that is the ultimate setup for idolatry. All right, guys, I'm out.